tell give people like a like a soft sell of how much fun it was to shoot booze traveler because you went every you had everyone's dream job yeah you know a lot of people would say that they say i want your job i said i'm still doing it <laughs> you want to kill me and take it it was really because i i'd not come from the hosting world I had hosted something year, way years before that, but my dream was to be an, an actor. And so I, you know, I did a couple of guest stars on a couple of shows you might know and this and, that. and then I got to do this play with Al Pacino. And I thought, wow, this is it. If I do nothing else to be on stage with maybe our greatest living actor and, and Jessica Chastain, um, it, it was just, it was just, unbel- just the, the experience was so fulfilling that I didn't really have an inkling to do hosting and and then it came around and I said wait a minute what am I stupid they're saying you you get to go around the world have drinks maybe get paid for it probably not much because it's cable television but you get to I mean I we I saw maybe went to maybe 60 countries six continents out of the seven and that's only because penguins don't make moonshine we would have gone there if we gave us a reason to but all the different people and cultures, it's something that I would have paid for after the fact, knowing what I know and how wonderful it was. Now, don't get me wrong. The traveling is hard. It's a grind. And, and you know, sometimes you just don't feel like doing it because you're jumping across international date lines. You get one hour sleep one day, 15 the next. Not too many of those days, by the way. And you always have to be on. And the crews, they would come and go. The cameraman, the sound guys. You know, because it's exhausting. Only an idiot would do every episode. Yeah. Who would do that? So, uh, but but I knew that it was going to be over sooner than I wanted it to be at some point. So just that experience. And I have always believed, coming from nothing, of course, uh, that, that we were enhanced more by the experiences we had in life and the people in our life more than we are by material goods. So thankfully, I believe that because uh, now I'm back to being... <laughs> No job again. <laughs> <laughs> I got lucky. I have to say, I, I, I really, it's, it's to me like winning the lottery. A guy that with really t- no hosting experience to speak of, certainly not in, the, in this genre, be, to be given this show. And so then again, I said to myself, all right, I, I have to honor those who not only who brought me to this point, but the people like you and the others you named. I have to be good. And I have to, this network is putting a lot of time and money into not only building a brand, but to doing the, the, this television show, because at the end of the day, it was a gift. That wasn't work. I would have paid. I would have paid them, of course. Maybe that's why they pay so little. <laughs> they know they know we love doing what we're doing. Right. But at yeah. the same at the same time, boy, what an experience that was. I mean, I would I would have done that forever. I never would have left and said, now I want to go do movies or I want to do this. That was just great because I love people and learning about these cultures live in person through what's going on. It was amazing. Amazing. What's cool. What's cool. And I think most people don't realize is like you, you get to steal moments for yourself in those shows. Like I remember, I remember we were fishing, we were fishing in a dugout canoe off the coast of Costa Rica before sunrise. And I watched the sunrise come up over a mountain Mm -hmm. and we're having cocktails in the boat. It's like six in the morning. you, You get to steal moments for your, for your own, like memory bank. What me- what what memories do you have of your where you're like like where you're like I was drinking drinking up in Nepal with the fucking Sherpa and he was spitting the the yeah, to spit it back into the bowl. That's how they made the the like. What moments did you get that that you got to steal for yourself? By the way, before I tell you that that's a great point to make because when you do that and you're truly in the moment, they can sense that they know this is not produced television that this guy is really living this moment at the time. And you could see the joy of, of, of that experience on his face. So to take those moments, to understand, to not just skip past them because everyone else on earth, I think given that opportunity would really take it in. You got a sunrise off Costa Rica in a boat, dug out canoe, having cocktails. If you don't pause at that moment and say, this is pretty cool. When do you then? Right. When, when would you ever? So for me, there were so many, uh, uh, you know, I remember the one that I'll just never forget because it involves my family. Uh, the second season we started in, in a place that they actually asked me, where would you like to go? 
Dude, that's that's my favorite. That's my favorite thing that I'm. That's the one thing I miss more than anything out of Travel Channel was that phone call. We would get it in January, and they'd be planning out the season, and they go, "Okay, pick thirteen places you want to go," and you'd be yeah. like, "And but and and you had budget. Either like four or internet for us, it was like four are international, eight are are in the states, and so. But it was the greatest fucking phone call yeah. in the world. It was. You're asking me where I want to go on this dream trip of my absolutely. So I chose Sicily because my mother's grandfather left there as a young man and and never returned, certainly not to live. And I had all this family there that I never met, but they knew they knew of me through television and what have you. And they they heard stories from America. And I mean, really old school in a little town outside of Palermo called Chimina. So I said, because my mother would talk about it on occasion. And I have cousins in Chicago that would talk about it and they would go visit. So I said, that's it. But not only that, now that I did one season, now I was saying, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to bring my mother. I'm going to bring my mother to meet, to say hello again to her DNA, people she's never met to really connect. And I did that along with my stepfather. I brought them. And oh, it, to me, to see the joy on my mother's face, meeting her family, to hear stories about her grandfather as a young kid. And, and everybody's crying constantly because they're so happy. And the mayor issues a proclamation and the band is playing and all of that. And I finally felt in a moment that I had turned the tables just for that moment and gave back to my mother just a little bit of what she had been, she'd given to me her whole life, not just life itself, but that I had really done something for her in a way that she would never forget. And every bit of that episode, I was thinking about that no matter what I was doing. Wow. What an amazing experience. It was. It's, 